Hi there, I'm Scott Lowe with Actual Tech Media, and today we are at the headquarters of Weka IO, where I'm joined by Richard Dyke, who is the VP for Sales. Richard, thank you for having us in your offices today. Absolutely, thanks for coming today. So we have an interesting drawing on the board behind us. We, a lot of times we'll do whiteboard videos, this is something a little bit different. Yep. But tell us a little bit about, well first of all, tell us what Weka means. Oh, for sure. Um, so Weka is uh, a, a unit of measurement, it's a Greek unit of measurement. So as you would have a gigabyte, terabyte, petabyte, um, it's a Weka byte. So it means 10 to the power of 30, so that's an awfully big number. And it also has something to do with a bird, right? It does, yeah. The weka is a bird in New Zealand, and um, it's actually a, a flightless bird. And what we like to say is, um, yeah, we're a flightless bird. We have no competitors. Very good. Yeah. Um, and that fits you well in a number of different ways. Yes. Um, particularly when we start looking at the architecture, which we have on the board behind us. Yeah. What are we looking at here? Okay, well this is an architectural diagram of our software. WEC is a software only solution. Mm -hmm. um, effectively, it's a uh, POSIX file system, fully shareable file system. Uh, it was built from the ground up, so there's a lot of patents around the technology and what have you. Um, and what we're looking at here is the software architecture. And inside the yellow box is you know, the components that make up the Weka um, architecture. The engineers have actually built their own networking stack, they've written their own I.O. stack, and they've written their own scheduling uh, module as well. Um, and we've got this broken into a front end and a back end. Uh, that comes into play when we talk about the deployment and, uh, methodologies. Um, and we've written our own SSD agent, so we can speak directly to SSD and NVMe. So one of the things we hear a lot about is um, the customization that's been gone into the platform to really optimize um, the, the experience and the, yeah. uh, the performance and the outcomes. But you have to stay somewhat compatible with some of the other things that are out on the market, otherwise there's no one to talk to. Right. And there's a front-end component, it looks like, that helps you handle that. Absolutely. So naturally you have to be able to work into existing infrastructure and architecture, and obviously Greenfield's a lot easier once you go forward. Uh, but with major investments in um, NFS and SMB and HDFS, um, these additional protocols um, are, are, are things we need to talk to. And so the Weka IO software is able to communicate uh, to speak with the entire you know, uh, client environment uh, into the file system as well, not just the Weka client. So in addition to what we see here, there's a Weka client that increases the performance relatively significantly, I would imagine. You're bypassing the kernel, so you're removing an entire layer of latency. Exactly. So what we've done is by writing the, uh, our own IO and network stack, bypassing the kernel, which has traditional limitations, um, protocols like NFS have been around for a long, long time. Um, we're able to bypass those uh, incumbencies. And so as a result, um, with say, for example, NFS has about 1.5 uh, gigabytes per second bandwidth, we can achieve up to 12 gigabytes uh, of uh, per second bandwidth with Weka IO to the client. Very good. So how does it work? Like, how are you getting past the kernel? What's it actually doing to make all this magic happen? Um, well, it's an end-to-end -end, you know, uh, solution. It's the rocket science that's in the, uh, the software itself. You know, f file systems are not easy to uh, build, no. and it's take over, taken over five years to be able to you know, kind of bring this to market and make it uh, GA and, and production and commercial ready. So uh, effectively what it's doing is, is mathematics that are beyond what's been done before and optimized around NVMe and you know, future and modern networks like today with 100 gigabyte uh, Ethernet or InfiniBand. Um, and then with the advent of uh, you know, GPUs and the call for you know, d demand for I.O., um, Weka I.O. has been able to put the math together to figure out how to serve that, uh, that need for I.O. at the GPU level. So what are you doing with GPUs in the architecture? So in effect, um, you're seeing that uh, uh, the, the, the world has changed, right? Oh, yeah. um, there's a lot of uh, AI applications and machine learning and training of data. And as a result, that's really where a lot of this, um, the GPU processing is, is, uh, is, is really efficient. Um, the problem with that is the data scientists have, are constantly churning that, that information. And as a result, they can't get the information fast enough. So traditionally, the best thing that they could do was to be able to run that off their own workstation. And you know, oftentimes, it'll be run into their desk. And they'll run their jobs and run their jobs and run their jobs. But you don't have a shared POSIX file system that everybody can get at. And the reason why they were concerned about doing that was traditional technologies wouldn't allow them to get the performance that they need because it was all about performance. And Weka I.O., believe it or not, can make the claim that we're faster than a um, local file system or local NVMe. And we're able to do that because we spread our architecture um, across the cluster and we utilize the network bandwidth as well to speed up the I.O. to the GPU processor. And when we look at some of the 
native or the legacy protocols that we have to support. A lot of those weren't designed in an era where multi-parallel operations could happen either. And exactly. You've uh, really stripped the limitations out of the equation by supporting legacy protocols, but on the, on the edge and not dealing with them internally. Exactly. And so, you know, as a result, I mean, we've been given the challenge time and again, where if you can actually be, you know, if you can give me a protected system, um, you know, give me backup, uh, allow me to move data around and be faster than a local file system, that would be Nirvana. Um, and what we've seen from traditional, even modern NFS, uh, all flash arrays um, versus, uh, say, local NVMe and Weka I.O., you'd see the modern flash uh, NFS architecture come in at about one and a half, uh, you know, or so gigabytes per second. Mm -hmm. You'd see the local file system come in about three, 3.2 uh, gigabytes per second. And you see the Weka come in in a shared environment, you know, fully POSIX uh, shared file system at about uh, 12 gigabytes per second. So that's pretty mind boggling. And, you know, that's been one of the limitations of flash, yeah. for flash. Um, I mean, flash is stupid fast, but nobody's been able to really Nobody's been able to create a big enough pipe to get all the data off as fast as Flash can handle. Exactly. Um, and you're going a long way towards that. Exactly. Um, so when I look over here, I see apps and I see driver. Can you tell me what this portion of the diagram means? You know, this is uh, on the right-hand side, your more traditional um, architecture. So this is typically what you would see and how um, a normal uh, or legacy uh, f uh, file system would communicate uh, in this environment. Um, and what you see here on the, on the Weka side is that we're able to bypass that driver and go put a client up on the um, uh, application server and communicate with that directly. And that's where we get our performance. And what do you, uh, this can be deployed on premises or in the cloud. How does that work? And does the, do the two environments talk to one another? Can you move data back and forth, things like that? Yeah, there's an awful lot of um, uh, features that go along with that. And um, because we have no concept of uh, locality of data for metadata or data, um, the, in, the, the system knows where everything is at all times. And so in addition to having us be able to do uh, automated tiering out to HDD, um, and or object storage or AWS or the, the cloud, um, we're actually able to do snapshotting as well. And if you would like to, what you could do is you can snapshot the entire file system, uh, let's just say you're on-prem, move it up to AWS, um, shut down your local file system on-prem, and then go ahead and put EC2 and run your jobs and compute, get a, a lot of compute power. When that job is done, go ahead and send the changes back. But the trick is we send the uh, metadata and the um, data to the cloud all in a package all at once. And then you, that's how you can send it back and forth. So you just mentioned um, that you can uh, tear off the HDD. Yes. Um, so that's not in the part of this diagram, but how does that work in the, in the architecture? Well, you know, the cool thing about what they had in mind when they built the product was um, NVMe and hardware is expensive. And, yeah. and hardware matters. And being efficient with hardware is... Um, overall a very important thing for large infrastructures, right? So um, they came up with a data distributed protection plan of their own, which is akin to erasure coding, but without the performance hit, um, that basically allows you to um, you know, uh, protect this data, N plus two, N plus four, if you will. So that hot tier is you know, extremely efficient um, and it's, it's, it's expensive. So rather than some other architectures where you have triple mirroring, you use triple the hardware. With WEC I.O. Um, and an M, you know, 18 plus 2 or 16 plus 2 type configuration, you could get you know, 80, 75 percent utilization rather than you know, a third of that. Right. Um, so that's all done really, very efficiently, but we were able to do under a single namespace, uh, tiering out to you know, a much less expensive media, like an object store or an S3 or any S3 connector actually, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, uh, to be able to make that file system where the hot data resides in NVMe and the cold or the cool data resides in a less expensive media. Very good. Richard, thank you for this overview of the Weka I.O. architecture. All right, thanks, Scott. Appreciate it. And thank you to our audience for watching this Roadcast video. 